Hey, how you doing? Toby here. Actually, before we go into this video, I really want to say thank you. So, you guys have just been uh, adding and adding to my to my uh, numbers, my subscribers, which is really cool. So, I really, really appreciate that. People clearly want to see this sort of stuff. I'm really thankful for it. So, numbers are growing. They're still small, but we're getting somewhere. Um, I'm going to keep making this stuff while you guys keep watching it. So, um, if you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button, and there's like a little bell there. If you click that, you'll see when any of my new videos come out. I'm going to try to get a video, sort of two, two to four videos a month out with interviews. Um, we did speak about the the, uh, the interviews that we're going to be doing, or that I'm going to be doing. Um, got a few of them pre-recorded already. They're really exciting, some of them. So the, um, the first one we're going to be doing, which is quite interesting for me, is Wayne Saunders of Iron Lord Forge. Now, Wayne is uh, actually pretty much the first person I had anything to do with in the blacksmithing uh, field industry. Who did I? I think the first person I spoke to was Riley Burns, actually. Good old Riley Burns. He's a, he's a great fella, and he put me in contact with um, with Wayne Saunders. I was looking to do a, a blacksmithing course and a bladesmithing course at the same time. I wanted to do some hammers and that sort of stuff. I'm a bit of a prepper at heart, sort of person who, when the, when the world ends, I, I want to be able to forge my own knife and uh, and 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 uh, out of some old bit of leaf spring and 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 hack up zombies. So <laughs> so um. That's not actually that true about the zombies. <laughs> Where are we? Um, Wayne Saunders. So this interview is with Wayne Saunders. He was uh, cutting up some fish at the time, which was interesting. Um, it was the day after the, um, the um, Glass House uh, Gallery blacksmith event opening which was really really cool so uh, if you haven't seen that one go back and watch that video it was great uh, sounds not great for the first couple of minutes but push through that and there's a really good good video actually if i do say so myself so yeah sit out sit down and relax and um let me know what you think please subscribe and if uh if you're not on if you're not found me on instagram yet um what are you doing it's uh, down below in the in the in the notes tell your friends like it share it really appreciate it and you'll see more and more of these videos thanks very much Hey, g'day, I'm Toby. I'm here today with Wayne Saunders. I just wanted to come and have a chat with him. So this is going to be the start of a new series of Australian knife makers and Australian blacksmiths. We see a lot of stuff online, especially in America, um, with some really well-known bladesmiths, but I thought we'd cover some Australian ones. So it seems pretty interesting to start with Wayne, as Wayne was the man who actually taught me about bladesmithing and blacksmithing. First person I really had anything to do with, so... How you doing, Wayne? Good, thank you. I would shake your hand, but you're... Ah, uh, oh, come on, what's wrong with cut, you? Cutting fish, what are you doing? <laughs> Ah, uh, just a few flatty I got there yesterday. Yeah, right. Just cleaning him up. He's one of those people who just stops on the side of the road and decides he's going to catch flathead. Yeah, well, you're running late, so yeah, yeah. got to do something. There you <laughs> go. Awesome. So, Wayne, tell us a little bit about your history, a bit of an origin story. Um, as far as my blacksmithing goes, I actually started with the blacksmith club, the Harvest Blacksmiths of New South Wales, and um, back in 2000, I think it was. And I was actually travelling around Australia. I found out about the club, I said, oh, I've always wanted to have a go at that. I thought I'll stop, have a go for 12 months and move on again. Yep. That's now, what, 19 years ago? Um, and I've been yeah. full-time since um, uh, 2003, so... Yeah, yeah it's, it's a passion I fell in love with and... So even if I couldn't make money yet, I'd still do it. Do it. So, you've told me the story before, it's pretty interesting how you ended up becoming, becoming full-time. Any of you that were growing up and might have gone to Timbertown at any point, you might have seen this man before. Tell us a bit about what happened there. Yeah, well, I, um, as a kid, I loved going to Timbertown. Um, used to come up this way on holidays. Um, and where is Timbertown for people who don't know? Timbertown is at Warhope, um, out near Port Macquarie. Port Macquarie, yeah. Four hours north of Sydney. Um, yeah, and they used to have to drag me out of the blacksmith shop. <laughs> I was always fascinated. And then, yeah, the actual blacksmith club used to meet there. Um, we yeah, right, at Timbertown. We no longer do, yeah, for, for a long time. Yeah, right. Until it was privately owned. Oh, um, right. That's yeah. another story we'll yeah, get another story. We won't go into that. that. Um, but yeah, it's um, and then the club used to meet there, and then I got to a point where I was sitting around. Well, what am I doing in this area? I'm here because of the blacksmithing, so I want to jump in and do it. There wasn't actually a blacksmith there at the time. Yeah, right. So I um, yeah, I just jumped in the deep end. I've only been doing it for two and a half years, and decided I'm going to go with blacksmith. So uh, okay, so doing it for two and a half years, you had a bit of an idea what you were doing, but you were by no means someone who was doing it every day or. No, oh, no, right. I do it oh, two or three times a week. Yeah, right. So, so you go from that to doing it every day in a workshop you don't recognise. 
Yeah. Seven days a week. In front of a crowd. With people watching. Yeah. Yeah, right. So tell me about how that happened. Like how that, how that sort of works for you. You must have got progressively better or, or better faster even. Well, yes. Yeah, having so much time at the forge. And the other thing too, I wasn't actually getting paid to be there. It was only what I could make as well as sell. Yeah, right. So you actually, it was piece work. Yeah. Huh. So I had to give demonstrations. That was the scariest bit, was talking to people and giving demonstrations. Yeah, right. You're naturally introverted sort of person. Um, yeah, I'm not an out there sort of person, but um, I'd soon realise that no one knew what I was talking about, so I could say whatever I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. get away no one knew what they much. were talking about. Every now and then you'd see someone who knew what they were talking about, and I'd just, um, yeah, I'd just tone down the bullshit and up the facts a bit. And... Yeah, right. <laughs> or ask them how to do something. No, no, but you just see it in their eyes. You can yeah, see it. Yeah. Clearly but yeah, my skill level went you know, from here to up here Very within quickly. 12 months. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, that, and that's an interesting thing, I suppose. It's like anything, the more you do something, the quicker you get better at it, and then your skills build faster yeah. even over time. Well, like I said, I had people bring a job in. I'd never done it before. I had to figure out how to do it on the spot with 50 people watching me, make it oh, look like I knew what I was doing. Oh, they'd bring jobs they'd just come in, oh, can you make this? It's like, you know, not every job I could do on the spot, but yeah, yeah. if it was only a small job, I'd actually do it there and then on the spot. and be making it up as you went. Yeah. And there was no YouTube much. really as such. In fact, there was no YouTube. No, there's no YouTube. No YouTube. Then. There's no like, give me five minutes, I need the toilet. and go and have a look at YouTube. No. Like we would now. Yeah, you see the people walking around with their big video cameras. and big video. <laughs> yeah, right. Not, not on their phone like they do these days. Those were the days, big video cameras. <laughs> so talk to me about your knives. So when did you start getting into knives? Well, I grew up hunting and camping. Um, so knives was the first interest. Yeah, right. Um, okay. Once I started, blacksmithing I realised what else you could do and it took me probably three years before I actually got back to that point where right. I started making knives and it started once again I was, I was actually at Timbertown and I was just because I was at the forge every day I just um, started making some knives while I was there and then someone come in oh are you selling them it's like well I suppose yeah <laughs> if you've got money I <laughs> yeah, if you've got money I'm selling them so yeah so it started that way um, you know read a few books and just went for it. So as far as the knife making goes, I actually never had anyone to teach me at the start. Yeah, right. I just, yeah, experimented and tried things and, but that's my whole philosophy on everything. Yeah, I've noticed that about you. I, um, I don't just follow the norm. No. Um, I'm always trying different things like, you know, even said, building flathead. This is a new technique, I've only just started doing it. Um, yeah, oh, I like to learn from you, but this I have no interest in. Yeah, Thank <laughs> fair you. enough. You're yeah. interested in eating it, but not that. I'll eat it. No, yeah. I'll eat it. No, that's cool. So you know, have you, have you got a style of knife that you think you sort of specialise in, or are you just you like to have a go at pretty much anything? Not really. Um, yeah, it's whatever takes my fancy. I tend to do like when I'm developing something, I'll do a run. Yeah. Um, you know, I did a, a run with like wizard's heads. So we did a whole series, and another one with like a braided handle. Yeah, I saw those. Yeah, I did a whole cool. set from a pairing knife right through the 10-inch chef's knife. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I tend to do that and then move yeah. on to another Yeah, yeah. Thing. Master that to an extent and then Yeah, and then, else. you know, do like this one with the poured pewter inlays. It's a, That's it's, a cool knife. It's, um, we'll take some photos of that and whack that on. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a quite an interesting technique and it's... Yeah, so pouring pewter instead of gluing on. the handle on. Yeah, there's no yeah. glue involved, and then it's perfectly sealed, there's no moisture you can get awesome. in. Um, yeah. So especially good. Most of my knives are forged knives, like this is a this is a stainless knife, so this is just stock removal. But yeah, I prefer right. forging knives. Yeah, I've noticed that about you, obviously that's sort of something you're known for. Like, And that was the thing for me, when I wanted to get into blacksmithing, I actually, or for bladesmithing, I came from the sort of, the prepper background, the person who carried a knife and liked to always be prepared and that sort of thing, and I wanted to be able to, end of days type stuff, forge my own knife if, if the world ended. And so it was quite important for me that I was able to forge. And a big part of that yep. is people online, well, I, was the, I was the average person online who asked, is there somewhere I can go? And you obviously were highly recommended in this area. I wanted that bit of fish. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, and so it was quite important that I, I could forge and coming to you, it was clear that that was a passion for you. And that, not that there's any issue with uh, stock removal or anything, it's a different style, but no. You're clearly passionate about. Yeah, well, everyone's journey is different. Yeah. Um, and I like, like I said, I actually, with my knives, I prefer to get more forge aspects into it mm. um, because it's a lot of skills that a lot of knife makers don't have. Yeah. Um, just different understanding of moving metal and whatnot. You know, like I said, there's no problem with either way, but yes, it's, different it's my own. Yeah, that's why I tell people if you're going to go into making knives, mm. try and develop your own style and find yeah. something, a little tweak, or obviously it doesn't want to be detrimental to the knife working. Um, yeah right. But 
Yeah, as long as it knife works well. Yeah, yeah. So no everything point else is good, but it doesn't work. Yeah, everything else is just um, bling, really. It's yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, no, I get that. But um, so with your knives, I mean, obviously you sell quite a few of your knives, but you also do courses, don't you? Yeah. So I, the bread and butter now of the business is doing the courses. I probably average fifty courses a year now. Yeah, right. Fifty courses a year. Yeah, I'm booked out. Well, currently six months ahead. Yeah, right. Well, um, I do remember the first course I, I did. I, I thought I'd be able to get you in within a month and it took a little while. Yeah, it depends on times. Like sometimes you can get in within a month, um, but a lot of the times it's three months or more now. Yeah, right. Awesome. And so you're teaching the black, black, uh, bladesmithing, but also blacksmithing. Yeah, so I do both. Um, yeah, I just like that variety. Like I wouldn't, yeah. people say, oh, you know, what's your favourite thing to do? It depends yeah, on the day. Right. Yeah, um, right. like I said, just did that big sculpture for the. Yeah. yeah. The gallery exhibition. Well, I got some photos of that one working on there too. Um, yeah, that was something I haven't. I've had that idea for ten years. I haven't been able to get to it. Yeah, so. really. But you, you don't do a lot of sculpture. Not a lot, no. No. Is that, is that time factor more than anything? Well, yeah, I prefer doing small pieces. Like I like to have things I can get out mm. sort of within a week. Mm. Um, I don't want to spend three years making one. No, no, and and I, I get that, but I'm wait, I'm far too impatient to actually have to get around to spending three years making something. Yeah, it'll get it'll get half finished and I get bored. Well, that's it, and that's what tends to happen. Yeah, well, okay. So, have you do you show any of your knives or anything like that, or is it? I mean, I know you go to the shows, obviously you see it at all of them. But you, is that something you're really interested in, or is it more just for uti like utilitarian type stuff for knives? It's not. I mean, obviously you have very beautiful knives. But yeah. you're not chasing an aesthetic that's going to win competitions or... Not really. You know, um, I do have, like, once again, I do have ideas. Um, yep. I'll do an art knife one of these days for one of these shows. Yeah, I've right. got an idea for an art knife. Yeah. Um, but like Something I said... fish scale. Right? No, no, nothing to do with fish. <laughs> like I said, completely art knife. More to do with roses, as a hint. Ah. But, um, so if we find a, a knife from Wayne at some point in the future with roses on it, we know where that's going. <laughs> Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be within the Damascus of the blade as well as in the handle and yeah, everything yeah. else, so it's not just a... So it'll all tie together. Yeah. So. Okay, so where can we find you? Like online, that sort of stuff, what's... So my business is Iron Lord Forge. Yeah. Um, website, just ironlordforge.com. Um, that's probably where most people contact me through. Um, I do have a Facebook page. I'm not the biggest on social media. Um, I sort of... I said I am a bit of a private person, I don't want to live my life online. Um, yeah, I get that. But, um, but For yeah. business nowadays, you have to sort of live your life online a little bit. Well, yeah, a little bit. That's it. I've got to the point now, I said it's, it's taken me 15 years to get to this point, but um, where I am, I don't have to rely on that. Um, I'm doing more, a lot more production work with my tools, with my tools, tooling, yeah, with tongs, with tongs and hammers. and. Yeah, so you'll um, find a lot, a lot of the tongs, if you buy tongs from places like Gamaco, You'll find a selection of them. They've got WS written on them, and they're actually made. Have they got that? Have they got that on there? Yeah, on the, my little WS on the Gamaco ones. They're, yeah, they're the Wayne Saunders tongs. tongs. Yeah. Knife makers tongs. So you will have seen his stuff around, even if you didn't realise it. Yes, yeah, so um, I've done quite a, probably over a thousand of them. Over yeah. a thousand tongs of those that particular style. Yeah, of yeah, tongs. that nice style tong. So, and that's a different side of it again. You know, the production work you can jig up for it, and yeah, of and course. then the the interesting part there is getting that rhythm going and. And that's what, even with the forging, you know, you're hammering, you know, if you can get a rhythm in things, everything goes a lot smoother and rather than rush panic and jumping all over the shop, so. Well, talking about obviously the, the forging and the patterns and that sort of things, when you when you taught me, oh, you threatened to get a stick out and smack me on the thumb with it. it, it <laughs> yeah, what, what's carpenters, chip. What, <laughs> what, what, what's the, the biggest thing you would say to beginner Blacksmiths, someone who's just started, there's obviously a big resurgence of blacksmiths and bladesmiths now, people are really interested in getting involved in it. Yeah. If there was one thing you could say to people that they should do that's going to increase their um, ability quicker and they're going to be able to get, I think everyone's aiming for the possibility of being able to make really nice knives or really nice whatever they're going into. Yeah. What would you say is the, the best thing they can do to really speed up that process? Um. I think a lot of people sort of struggle because they try and jump too far ahead too quick. Yeah, right. Like they don't concentrate on that hammer technique. If you get a good hammer technique and the hammer swinging, a lot of people you see they're sort of pushing with the hammer like this. Yeah, yeah though interesting enough, you see that on YouTube, people teaching to almost do that planishing type. Yeah, thing. and that's um, it's very inefficient way of doing it. And you're all tense and tight. You yeah, actually right. want to be, the more relaxed and more rhythm you can get while you're forging. Um, 
the more naturally the metal will move on you. Yeah. And yeah, don't try and go too fast to start with. Start with a just slow, steady rhythm. Yeah. Um, and you'll find that once you've got that technique down, the speed will come. Yeah, right, okay. You and know, get your eye in, because it's all well a good belt and a hard, but if you're hitting it in the yeah. right place... Yeah, well, it's, it's understanding how the metal moves. Yeah. So if you can see what's happening, and then you can control what's happening, rather than just bashing away, and then yeah, looking yeah. at, oh, that's not the same bowl, would it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, th and that makes sense. And I suppose it's, it is, like we were speaking about before, repetition as well, so not just trying to, like you say, jump forward, do one thing and then go, now I want to make Damascus or yeah. a dagger or something yeah. that's just that next level up, actually spending a bit of time making that knife maybe five, six times or similar knives. Yeah, yeah. well, with knives, you know, have a style of knife that you, you like. Right. And do it and experiment and then you've got to test them. Yeah, of course. You know, this is my way of testing it. Um, I've got yeah, I've... knives in my kitchen I test with, knives that are, and, you know, um, knives when I'm hunting yeah, yeah. that I test with. Um, but you've got to test your products because you don't know whether they work, unless you've got someone else who can test them for you. So if you're not a hunter and you want to make hunting knives... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can send a mate out with your knife. Yeah. And, um, get Go some, kill something for me. Get some feedback, but but ask for honest feedback and not just, oh wow, that's... That's a great knife. Right? I mean, I couldn't actually cut anything with it, but it was beautiful. Yeah, I've I seen one recently, a, a, actually a, another knife making mate, um, and he had a review put up, and you know, like I, cooked, I cut up my whole dinner before I had to sharpen his like. Okay. You should be able to cut up. He's happy with that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is I've probably cleaned. I don't know over a hundred fish. Yeah, right. I've sharpened have that knife. Sharpen it. A couple of looks on the steel occasionally, but um. Awesome. But yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you very much for your time. I would love to shake your hand, <laughs> no, but I'm not going to. I'm a bit of a wuss. I don't want to wash this, this All right. stuff off my hands. Yeah. Well, but thanks very much. Appreciate it. No worries. Thank awesome. you for your time. Cheers, bud. Cheers. No one could hack up zombies. Where am I going with this? <laughs>